Only a few weeks ago, the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield was cracking the 5% level. But it currently sits well below that. The latest inflation report out of the United States showing that consumer prices in the states stayed flat in October and a cooler than expected showing. So how does that set us up in the bond market going forward? Joining us now to discuss Scott Colburn, Managing Director and Head of Active Fixed Income at TD Asset Management. Scott, it's always great to have you in the program. This feels like one of those inflation reports, one of those kind of days we've been waiting for for some time now as investors. It's a good news day for all investors, whether it's fixed income or equities. It's uh, a bit of a reinforcing of a, a Goldilocks uh, sort of scenario, modest growth and, and good inflation. So yeah, uh, a big sigh of relief. Uh, the market was expecting a little bit more. Uh, actually, you know, they were expecting three tenths to four tenths of a, of, uh, of a sort of month over month inflation, got 0.2. And so that relief uh, has fed through into a huge rally, as you know, uh, today across the board. And I think from an inflation story, that uh, takes you know, the burden off uh, any imminent uh, hike from the, the Fed. Um, so we'll see how growth plays out through, uh, through the, you know, the next quarter or so. But for the, the near term, this is a, a big tailwind for, for the asset market. Now, sometimes when we take a look at a piece of economic data in an inflation report, they'll say, beneath the headline, here's what I didn't like, or here's what we need to pay attention to. Uh, beneath the headline numbers here and the flat reading month over month, was there anything to give you pause or concern, or do the rates hikes seem to be doing their work to bring inflation gradually down? I think what you're going to see is a bit of a pushback ultimately by central bankers, right? We've, this is a good news story. Uh, for the most part, the details are very good. I mean, even the, you know, the shelter, which popped up last month, has come back down. Um, you know, maybe super core uh, inflation, you know, you can really slice and dice inflation here, it is a little bit higher than expected, which is sort of the focus on the labor market. And I both Bank of Canada and the Fed have sort of said they want to see further evidence of cooling on the on the wage front in the labor market. So I think they're going to be, you know, there'll be a natural pushback a little bit by central bankers here. They're not interested in hiking, in my personal opinion. Uh, they're going to be patient um, and let the data come to them. As the Fed ch uh, chair did say, look, we're prepared to over tighten or just stay on the tightening side uh, more so than, you know, accommodating uh, a change in the market. So, you know, it'll be a, a, di a, 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 you know, a dilemma. How much do you price in in terms of cuts in the market? Do you start in the second quarter of next year, or do you, you know, do you move it more to the second half of the year? And uh, right now we're starting to price it in in the second quarter, so maybe that's where the tension will show up between the market and the central bankers. But I do think we're we're done, um, and you know, right now it's it's a, it's a Goldilocks story because it's an inflation that's come down and growth is okay here. Um, but if we see you know growth go down and inflation continue to go down, that's going to be a little bit more. Uh, concerning for asset markets. Yeah, is the Fed's dilemma, or maybe even the Bank of Canada's dilemma going forward, not so much what they're seeing in the data, but how we react to it as investors, how consumers react to it, thinking, I just think back to the spring when the Bank of Canada said, oh, we're not going to go this time, and everyone said, game on, and the housing market yep. ripped, and they said, wait a minute, we're back in the game again. Is that, is that what they're more worried about now, how we behave in the next couple of months? Absolutely. There's, there's you know, an element of expectations here, and we've had inflation expectations that came out last week that were, you know, at least from the Michigan survey, were a little higher than the markets expected. Um, so there's that managing the expectations, right? Um, let uh, let the labor market cool off. We've got we've had one uh, non-farm payroll that's been been soft, and you know we need a probably a string of that. We we need this to feed through and continue the the softening on the labor side. We've seen continuing continuous claims. Uh, creep up. So there's evidence of increasing labor supply, but not really maybe real softness on the labor market. So yeah, be prepared to, to let central bankers wait here. And the market uh, uh, is going to have to deal with that little sort of push me, pull me uh, attitude from uh, the central bankers here. I wanted to ask you too about uh, an interesting headline I saw pass in, in the past little while. Something about a bond auction in the States. There, there had been some concern, I guess, about issuance earlier in the year, and they had a bit of a messy one recently. The supply is um, sort of the, a bit of a hair uh, on the bond market. And what we've seen is the big inversion of the, of the yield curve, right? Short term rates are higher than longer term rates. And that's consistent with the Fed tightening. Now, as we move towards the Fed on hold and ultimately pricing in tight, uh, cutting, um, you know, you're going to get a disinversion and um, supporting that sort of higher rate staying above longer term rates is this supply. And yes, last week we had 
three uh, auctions. We had a, a three-year, a 10-year, and a 30-year. The first two went well. Their 30-year was a big dud. Uh, it led to a big sell-off in rates. And so I think that's going to weigh on the longer end, and it's going to contribute to the steepening of the yield curve. That being said, I think rates in the long end can still come down. But it's that headwind, right? Lots of supply uh, that's going to impact the bond market. And um, you know, fiscal spending isn't, isn't going away anytime soon. So they need to, uh, to issue a lot of debt. Okay, speaking of fiscal spending not going away anytime soon, we sense some of the rating agencies not pleased in the last several months about what's happening on Capitol Hill. Uh, Moody's, was it the latest to come out with, a, I think it was a downgrade of the debt outlook? They sort of, they, they put out a, you know, um, a downgrade on, on the outlook, but on they the didn't, outlook, yeah. 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 It's, it's not, um, it's not a, a ratings change, but um, it is just another, you know, warning sign. And the markets are doing a bit of that work too, right? Um, putting in um, a, a more of a term premium and putting more of a premium on being uh, buying the longer end uh, because of the, the excess supply. So uh, yeah, that is, that is a, a huge issue that, you know, I don't think this, I think this is not gonna go away. I think politicians now are comfortable post COVID spending. I mean, they may uh, rein it in a bit, but I, I, I don't think this is going away and this is gonna contribute to uh, a stickiness or an upward bias in the longer end relative to the short end. So we put it all together, what does it mean for fixed income investors? Because it was a tough 2022. It hasn't been the 2023 that we th many of us thought it would. Have we, have we turned a corner? I believe we've turned a corner, but I'm measured in my enthusiasm. I think that we can see, you know, long-term rates, 10-year rates in the U.S. maybe converge to 4, 4 and a quarter. I don't think we're going to see, you know, short-term policy rates get back quickly to, you know, the, you know, the zero to two percent range that maybe we were comfortable with in the pre-COVID uh, era. So uh, it's more of a measured uh, enthusiasm, but I think that we've, you know, nipped uh, the inflation challenge. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time to to uh, ring out the expectations in the labor market on in, on on wages. Um, but it's, you know, the, there are crosswinds at play: deglobalization, de aging demographics excess uh, spending so that you know it's going to measure or limit how much we can uh, see a rally and so uh, i'm enthused for the moment and i i think you're going to get a nice risk rally uh, into the end of the year with lower bond yields and probably good uh, returns on risk assets as well and we'll see how uh, 2024 plays out